Pastor Mark Muto, and this is Bible 101 from Higher Things. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas, not because maybe you're watching this around Christmas time, it might not be close to Christmas time at all, but Merry Christmas because we're talking today about the birth of Jesus, which of course we celebrate on Christmas, December 25th, nine months after March 25th when we celebrate the Annunciation of our Lord, which we heard about last time on Bible 101. The birth of Jesus. What a remarkable story. A couple of things stand out. The actual story of Jesus' birth and the shepherds and all that comes to us from St. Luke's Gospel. And one of the things we notice, well, two things actually. Number one is it's a very historical account. He tells us that Quirinius was governing Syria and that Caesar Augustus had decreed a census. So everyone had to get back to their hometowns, the towns of their ancestry. So Joseph and Mary head back toward Bethlehem uh, so that they can be counted in the census because, of course, the government needs to know how many people there are so they can collect taxes. And so we see that the story of Jesus, his birth into this world, is very historical. It's anchored in real historical events that we can even verify outside of the scriptures. But the other thing about the story of Jesus' birth is how remarkably unawesome it is compared to the world. I mean, think about it. If we were going to describe the birth of a king, would he really be born in a stable, in a manger? Would he become... Would it be visited by shepherds instead of like other kings and so on? And so the story is as as beautiful and simple as it is. It's just that. It's simple. It's not the kind of story you can make up. Because if we were going to make up the story about God being born in the world, we'd have had all sorts of things going on like palaces and armies and soldiers and the kind of stuff that kings have. But here is the Son of God who comes in the flesh, who is born now in fulfillment of all of God's promises, humble, in a stable in a manger, laid in a manger, visited by shepherds, who go back and tell everyone what they saw, and that's sort of it. But a real historical birth of a real historical Savior. Let's think about that. First, we have the birth of Jesus. And St. Luke tells us that there was no room for them in the inn, so Jesus was born and placed in a manger. Now, a manger is a hay trough. It's a, it's a place where the animals would eat, probably in a barn of some sort. Maybe in a barn like we know of, maybe a wooden barn, or, or maybe in a cave or something like that out back behind the inn. But the first thing we learn about Jesus when he is born, he's born in Bethlehem. And Bethlehem is Hebrew for house of bread. And where is Jesus laid? in a food trough to show us that he is the bread of life, the one whose flesh we eat and whose blood we drink for the forgiveness of sins and life and salvation. So already in Jesus' birth, we begin to see in the details the way in which he's going to save us. And Mary brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger. Notice in this picture here, that the church has, from the very earliest days, recognized that when Jesus was wrapped in swaddling clothes and he was placed in the manger, and maybe that manger was in a cave or some sort of thing out back from the inn, there was a picture there of Jesus' death, too. The tomb, him being wrapped up in the burial cloths. The church recognized and rejoiced from the very start that the birth of Jesus foreshadowed the death of Jesus. He came into this world and he was born to save us from our sins. And then angels appear in the skies over Bethlehem and they announce to shepherds who are out in the field watching their flocks by night that the Savior has been born. And this first sermon referring to Jesus, pointing out Jesus, says not only who he is, he's the Christ, he's born in Bethlehem, but they tell the shepherds where to find him, wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. The Savior has been born. But why shepherds? Shepherds are like stinky, blue-collar, minimum wage kind of guys out on the hillside. Because the Lord doesn't do things the way we think they should be done. He doesn't appear to the rich and the mighty and those that the world worships, but rather comes in humbleness and lowliness. And so the shepherds go and they rejoice to see the infant Jesus. They rejoice to see that the Savior has been born and God has fulfilled the promise that he made all the way back to Adam and Eve and kept in mind of all the Old Testament saints. Now it has come to pass. And so we rejoice at the birth of Jesus, as the hymn reminds us. O oh, that birth forever blessed, when the Virgin, full of grace, by the Holy Ghost conceiving, for the Savior of our race, and the world's Redeemer, first revealed His sacred face. Evermore, 
and evermore. I'm Pastor Mark Buto, and this has been another episode of Bible 101.